Hello, my name is Curtis Miles and I'm a technical specialist with IBM. I want to talk to you today about the idea of smarter process with context-aware applications. So before we get started, let's maybe lay the groundwork with some definitions. So what is a context-aware application? So maybe one definition that we can use is that an application is context-aware when it's capable of responding to changes in the environment based on business policies in real time. So that's a lot of words. So maybe we can boil it down to make it a little bit simpler by using these three words. Detect, decide, and act. So when we're talking about detecting, this is, you know, what are we detecting? Really, we're detecting changes in the environment. So what's happening around us that we can take advantage of, uh, of identifying so that we can um, do something about it. So how do we know what to do about it? Well, that's deciding, and that's based on our business policies. So what does our organization say is the way that we, we should um, respond in any given time? And then, of course, we actually have to respond, and so that's where ACT comes in. And so there's lots of different ways that we can act, as we'll see as we go through uh, some of the demonstration today. So this idea of context is really defined by the who, what, where, when, and why that's all around us as we are interacting with an application. So if we think about some of the different places where um, this context can come from, we can see that our context is provided by mobile devices. So maybe this is telling us information about um, you know, where our customers are based on their geo geolocation or information about what applications they're using or number of contacts they've got in their, in their uh, contact address book. Maybe it's coming from operational systems that we're interacting with that are providing information about account data or you know, recent transactions, etc. Maybe we are in the process of interacting with some business processes and so the state of those processes can give us an idea of context. The physical environment, you know, maybe this is weather or humidity or um, temperature or you know, anything that's happening in the world around us that can help provide some details about what's happening at any given time. And then detected event patterns. So what are the things that we've noticed over time that then help us help to inform us about um, interesting situations or patterns that we might want to detect to take some action on? So as we start to think about this idea of detect, decide, and act, we can kind of map this down into technologies um, like you see on the screen here. So detect, for example, is classically identified with events, so business events. So what are the events that we're, that we're observing happening inside of our environment and how do we correlate events together so we can um, identify interesting patterns of things happening over time. Decide is all about business rules. So what are the business rules that are defining our organizational policies for how we want to actually take the information that we've now detected and decide what to do about it. And that deciding what to do about it often comes down to executing business processes so that we can orchestrate the workflow of all the people that need to be involved in responding to you know, whatever it is that we've detected, however we've decided to respond. A fundamental piece here is the connectivity. So the enterprise service bus provides us the ability to receive information about the events and the patterns that we've detected. Um, to call services that help us to decide what to do about it and then invoke processes to actually take the action. And a lot of times this information is coming from mobile devices or operational systems or, or that physical environment, but it all hangs together with our enterprise service bus. And so just to kind of make sure that we understand that this is not fiction, right, this is stuff that we can actually do today, let me show you some of the names of the IBM products that kind of help to solve each of these different types of problems. So on the detect and aside, this is where we start to think about IBM operational decision management. So how do we express the if-then conditions for the patterns that we want to detect and the business rules that are going to help us to, um, to decide what it is that we want to do. Acting for business processes is all about IBM business process management, which helps us to orchestrate the workflow to make sure that steps aren't getting missed and people aren't falling through the cracks. From a mobile perspective, we have our IBM Worklight uh, mobile enterprise application platform that helps us to develop mobile applications that are context aware. And then on the physical environment, of course, this could be something like Web3MQ or MQTT based messaging that's relaying information from sensors. Maybe it's using IBM Message Site for very high volumes, low latency messaging. Um, from a variety of sources. And then of course the operational systems are whatever are in a particular organization um, to be able to tie that in to, to, to take advantage of the wealth of information that's represented there.
Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into our scenario. So what I want to do is I want to introduce um, on-the-fly airlines. So this is a fictional airline that we're going to use as the basis for our conversation today. And we're going to look at a story involving on-the-fly airlines through three primary perspectives. So first, we have Mike Mitchell. So Mike is a longtime on-the-fly customer. He lives in Jacksonville, Florida. And we're going to watch as Mike takes a flight from his home in Jacksonville all the way to Las Vegas to attend the IBM Impact 2013 conference. Now he's actually got to have he's going to have a connection. His connection is going to uh, be in Kansas City, Missouri, uh, and we'll see how that plays out. We're also going to look at the story through the eyes of Rachel Richards. So Rachel is an on-the-fly employee. She's a business analyst. She's been at the company for five years, and she loves it. She loves being it on the fly mostly because she feels very empowered in her role as a business analyst. So she's able to make um, changes to the way that the organization is operating by using business rules, as we'll see here. Um, and she just she loves the fact that she can do that. Uh, we're also going to see the story through the eyes of Manuel Montez. And so he is part of the aviation maintenance management team. And so he's the guy that's actually inspecting the air, aircraft when it's going to land at the, uh, at the connection in Kansas City. And he's just always looking for ways to do his job more efficiently. Okay, so this is, this is what we're going to see. We're going to see Mike flying from um, Florida all the way to Las Vegas. And unfortunately for Mike, it's not going to be a particularly smooth experience. So to start things off, his original outbound flight is going to actually be delayed coming out of Jacksonville. So that's not very good. But it gets even worse because when he lands at his connecting uh, and gets ready to board his connecting flight, he's actually going to find out that that connecting flight is canceled because of a maintenance problem that Manuel has, has identified. And not only is his flight canceled, but it's actually the last flight out of the day. And so he's got to be put up in a hotel and he's going to get a, a flight out the following day. Now to make matters even worse, when, he, when Mike finally arrives in Las Vegas, he is going to have his bags be lost. And so, you know, overall, just not a very good experience for Mike. You can see how if he was, um, uh, you know, was flying with on the fly here, this could really damage his, his perception of, of on the fly as an airline, which is where Rachel comes in. So Rachel is in the head office of on the fly and she is responsible for customer satisfaction. So we're going to see the ways in which she is able to put um, policies in place to help soothe Mike as he's going through this uh, somewhat unfortunate experience of his flight. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive in. So I'm going to go. I'm going to switch over here to what I call my context or application control center. So this is really just my real world simulator, and this is where I can, you know, press my play button here to send events to kind of cause things to happen. And so this is where, for example, we're going to be able to delay Mike's flight. And we're going to be able to send send events that indicate what Mike is doing at any given time. Now also on the screen here you'll see that I've got a picture of the process. So this is the process that Mike is actually interacting with when he's taking his flight, whether he realizes it or not. So he probably never really thinks about the fact that he's participating in a process as he's you know, boarding the plane and doing all the different things that we do as part of our flight. But really this is going to help us to identify where he is at any given time and that idea of where he is helps to inform our sense of context which can color the way that we interact with Mike to make sure that we're doing so as appropriately uh, uh, as possible. And then down at the bottom we have all the different operational systems that we're going to be receiving information from. We have our business event processing engine that's going to be receiving events so that we can watch for patterns of things occurring. We have our business rules engine, which allows us to de decide what we want to do when we've detected that certain patterns are occurring. And then we have a mobile application that Mike uses um, to be able to, uh, uh, to work with on the fly. And so that mobile app looks like this. So this is Mike's iPhone. And what it has here is just his ability to kind of see the flights that he's got in his itinerary, which is nothing at the moment. And we'll see how, through the use of this mobile application on the fly, can communicate very effectively with Mike. OK, so let's. Uh, Let's just do one more thing before we go ahead and kick off our very first event. And that is that I want to pop up Mike's profile just to show some information about um, you know, the type of thing that we know about Mike that we can use as we're making decisions about how to best interact with him. So you know, we know the standard stuff about his date of birth, you know, how to contact him. We perhaps know his preference for how he prefers to be contacted. Uh, we know if he's a part of our loyalty program 
what his favorite seat is, how many points he's got, what loyalty tier, et cetera, et cetera. So lots of details, lots of information that we can use to, um, to figure out how to best communicate with Mike. We also probably know some information about some of the flights that he perhaps has booked with us in the past. So maybe we know where he's gone from and to, and we might also know whether there are any unfortunate incidents on those flights, such as flight delays or cancellations, et cetera, that can also color the way that we will interact with Mike. Okay, so let's, uh, let's close this profile, and let me go ahead and press my play button here. Now, as I do this, what's going to happen is, in this case, we're going to send an event that indicates that Mike is actually booking his flights. Now, when I press play, it's going to cause a chain reaction of things to occur because we will detect that this particular pattern has happened, and then we'll see how our diagrams are updated um, to be able to respond to these, these uh, events that we've detected. So let me go ahead and press play. And as we do that, we can see that our operational systems are sending information to the business event runtime. Our business event runtime has, also, has then caused an update on our mobile app. So if we actually pop up Mike's mobile app, sure enough, we see that he's now got his flights are being displayed as part of his itinerary, and his mobile application is now up to date, showing him the current context, right? Showing him the flights that he's got booked. Now, at this point, we haven't actually started the process, right? Because you'll notice if you look at the process based on our BPMN notation, our start event here says that it's going to kick off 24 hours before the flight. So let me go ahead and press play again here, which is going to indicate that we actually are now 24 hours before the flight. So when I press play, we'll see that our business event runtime is detecting that 24 hours before the flight. Our process is kicking off. We're actually now you know, at two particular points in the process at the same time. And as a result of that change in the context of the process, you may have noticed that on Mike's mobile app, he now has a new option, right? The new button appeared here to be able to check in for his flight. And the reason that that button showed up is because now he's at this particular part in the process, which tells us that he is ready to check in for the flight, you know, within 24 hours of, of the flight. Um, so just another, just an example here of how we can use the idea of a um, particular state in a process to help inform the context that we can use to communicate back to Mike. Okay, so now he's got his flights booked. He's perhaps on his way to the airport here. He's traveling to the airport. And this is where we are actually going to go ahead and send the event to indicate that, um, uh, that Mike's flight is going to be delayed. But before we do that, let me hit this event that indicates that Mike is actually going to arrive at the airport. So if we hit play here, what we can detect based on geolocation, right? We can identify when Mike has entered the geofence of our airport that we know he's headed to. So we can move our process forward now from travel to airport out into, you know, beyond uh, that particular part in the process. Now let me send the event that indicates that Mike's flight has been delayed. So he's at the airport. Um, his flight is going to be delayed. And so we have detected now from the operational systems that this flight delay is going to happen. And as a result, up on Mike's device pops this notification that tells us that his flight's delayed. But not only that, it actually had, we have the opportunity here to communicate with Mike and help soothe some of the pain that he might be feeling because of this delayed flight. So for example, we can offer him a free, you know, a free lounge pass. And so that might be something that just kind of takes, takes this thing out. Now what I want to do here, let me go ahead and close that notification, close our message center here. You'll notice that our flight has been indicated as delayed on, on our itinerary. Um, what I want to do is I actually want to rewind time. So if I come back here and I rewind time, you'll see our process state reverts back to when Mike hasn't yet arrived at the airport. And I actually want to take this step of Mike arriving at the airport and I want to move it all the way to the end. So let's pretend that Mike hasn't arrived at the airport yet when we detect that his flight has been delayed. So let's go ahead and send that notification again to delay his flight. Again, he's not at the airport yet now. We detect it from the operational systems. We run our business rules to figure out how to interact with Mike. And this time you'll notice that when he gets the notification popping up on his mobile app, it no longer is offering him a lounge pass because we know he's not at the airport, so we can be a little bit more specific in what we offer. And so maybe here we have partnered with Starbucks to give him a, a free coffee. Maybe we've even detected how many Starbucks there are between his current location and his expected route to the airport. Um, then we can you know, leverage our partner network that way. So lots of interesting things that we can do when we're able to take advantage of information about the context, which in this case was knowing whether or not he's, uh, he's arrived at the airport yet. Okay, so we'll close that notification, 
um, let me go ahead and now let Mike arrive at the airport. Again, detecting his geolocation, figuring that he's near, kind of within the bounds of the airport, and we can um, identify that it's time to move our process forward. Okay, so if we continue on with our scenario, so at this point, Mike can do some interesting things, right? So he can actually go ahead and check in for his flight, which really is something that can happen in a variety of different ways. So you can think about Mike perhaps using his mobile app by pressing on his check-in button here to complete that part of the process. But maybe he's actually interacting with a kiosk, or maybe he's going to uh, you know, the counter and talking to one of the agents or doing it on the web. Lots of different ways that he can actually compete uh, complete this step in the process through many different channels. And so what we want to be able to do is detect, regardless of which channel has been used to be able to check in for the flight, we want to detect that that's happened so that we can update the state of our process to be consistent with where we know Mike is. So let's pretend that Mike has checked in here for his flight, perhaps um, he's done this you know, on the web or, or at, with an agent or at the kiosk. And as a result, our process is moving forward. And now we'll notice that because of the updated state of the process, the buttons actually change on, mobile, on Mike's mobile app. And now he's you know, perhaps um, in the flight, and the flight is, is taking off, and he's got the button that allows him to make his in-flight purchases. Or maybe you know, this is something that, um, that he, he gives him the ability to call over the flight attendant instead of pressing that little button above him that he has a hard time reaching, and you know, lots of different things that we can do if we've got onboard Wi-Fi on our plane. But regardless, our process app is up to date, showing us the things that are relevant at any given time based on the context which involves the process and the information that's happening collecting from our operational systems. All right, so let's move on here. And now, unfortunately, we're going to be, we're at the part where, you know, Mike is going to have his, uh, his connecting flight canceled. So let's go ahead and allow Mike his, uh, his first leg of the flight to land. And as the first leg of the, leg of the flight lands, he's receiving information um, that indicates that so, and now maybe he's got to check into his next leg so that button appears. But now we detect that his next uh, leg is actually canceled. And so we pop up the notification informing him of that onto his device. Now, because like I said before, this is the last flight out of the day. So we've actually got to put Mike up in a hotel. So we have a, um, uh, a recommendation here for what hotel that uh, he'll be staying at. And we've also recommended a, a next flight for him to take. So again, there would be lots of business rules that are involved in this to figure out based on Mike's preferences and his, you know, frequent flyer status, et cetera, you know, what flight we are going to be prioritizing to get him on, uh, et cetera. Now, maybe he's not particularly crazy about this flight that has been offered to him here. So you'll notice that he's got a button on his mobile app here to be able to request the customer service call. So if I pop up the IVR queue here, which is the view of our, um, you know, from our call center uh, at On The Fly, and we watch what happens when Mike goes ahead and presses this button on his mobile app to request the customer service call. Up onto our IVR queue pops this notification that somebody needs to get in touch with Mike Mitchell because he has requested you know, some, uh, some assistance. Now, we actually know more information than that, though. We don't just have to rely on the fact that, oh, there's somebody called Mike Mitchell and he's, he's requesting a call. We can actually take advantage of the fact that we know that his original flight has been delayed by two hours, that his connecting flight has just been canceled, and we can leverage that information to maybe you know, show him a little bit more love as we're, as we're talking to him as, uh, as the call center agent. And so, you know, let's, let's assume that we have worked out the details with Mike and so we can go ahead and mark this particular call complete. And, you know, perhaps at this point, Mike comes in and he's, uh, you know, he stays at his hotel. But now let's take a slightly different look at the scenario. And what I want to do is I want to look behind the scenes now, switch our hats, and let's, just send, let's pretend that we're Rachel. And so what we're going to do as Rachel is we are going to come into the Decision Center Enterprise Console to take a look at the business rules that just executed behind the scenes without us really being aware that identified what hotel it was that we were going to put Mike up in. Okay, so let me come into my Decision Center. I'm going to log in as administrator so we can see all the bells and whistles. And I've got my project here, my Smarter Process Business Rules project that I'm going to explore. And when I do that, you can see that I've got my notification um, uh, section here of my business rules. And I've got my IROP, so this is my irregular operations or our flight cancellation rules. And if I open up this category of rules, you can see that I've got three different decision tables here is what we call this, this uh, format of rule. And you can see that I've got one here for the layover hotel selection. 
Let me go ahead and browse that. And as we open up this decision table, you can see exactly why it was that Mike was sent the notification to say that he would be staying in the Westin. Because based on the flight cancellation event, where the layover airport is Kansas City and the loyalty tier of the passenger is, is top tier, which we saw that Mike was, here is the selected hotel that we're actually going to go ahead and put him up in. Okay, so now what if Rachel perhaps has uh, just been reading something in the paper and uh, perhaps the Westin in Kansas City just got a really bad review right from some uh, popular travel magazine. So we actually don't want to send the top tier guests to the Westin anymore because we actually want them to feel special and you know maybe there's bed bugs or something has been identified at the Westin, I don't know. For some reason Rachel actually wants to come in and make a change. She can click edit here on her decision table and using her uh, decision table editor she can actually come in and click on the Westin and she could for example pick any of these other hotels that would be within their partner network that on the fly uh, that would perhaps be a little bit more appropriate for for the top tier guests. So I'm going to go ahead and make that change and I'm going to save that change to my decision table. And now at this point, as Rachel, what I would do within this particular type of business rule environment is I would do some testing of my business rules to make sure that the change that I just made to that business rule is appropriate and that it works as expected so that the right people are going to be staying in the right hotels now. Um, and I would maybe even do some simulation to figure out, based on all of the times that flight of, flights have been delayed in the last year, how much more, perhaps, how many more times would we have now sent somebody to the Sheraton instead of the Westin, um, you know, to kind of do that what-if analysis to help me identify whether this is the type of change that I want to make from a business perspective. So let's assume that I've done that testing and that simulation, which I can all, I can do directly within this environment that we're seeing here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to deploy that change out into our production system. Now this may or may not be Rachel's role. Perhaps there's somebody in IT that's supporting her through this process, but what I want to emphasize here is just how quickly and easily we can actually make those types of operational changes and, um, and ultimately push them out so, you know, so that they can actually affect the way that we are doing business on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm answering some questions here about you know, what version um, I want to actually go ahead and publish and what servers I'm publishing it to, etc. And ultimately I hit my deploy button. And as I do that, what's happening behind the scenes is it's gathering all the information about the rules that are part of this particular project. It's processing those rules. It's analyzing them to make sure that there are no missing cases or no overlapping cases that we, uh, that we may have missed. And it's going to be packaging those up into what we call a rule set archive that is the executable format of these, of these business rules. Okay, so here we can see that our deployment has been successful and we've got version 1.2 of our business rules that have now been pushed out. So what I want to do is I want to come back to our control center. I want to rewind time again like I did before. This time you can see our process state reverts back where Mike is still uh, in flight. Let's bring up his mobile app. We can see that um, you know he's, he's again able to make his in-flight purchases and let it, let's re-delay Mike's flight. And so we're going to um, allow him to land on his first leg. We're going to detect that notification from the operational systems that says the flight's delayed. And we should see the notification that we saw pop up before happen again here on his mobile device to indicate his flight's canceled. But you'll notice that this time, the hotel that's listed there is not the Westin, but it's actually the Sheridan Gateway, which is consistent with what, the change that Rachel just made to the business policy behind the scenes. Right? So she's actually able to affect the information and the way that we're actually interacting with Mike based on changes to those business rules and um, very quickly. Okay, so now that was kind of uh, the Mike's perspective and Mike's and Rachel's perspective of what's happening as a result of this flight cancellation. But remember, we also have Manuel. So Manuel is our maintenance uh, uh, management technician. And so let's take a look at what he was doing behind the scenes that caused this flight to be delayed because he's actually going to be inspecting the plane. So if we bring up Manuel's mobile environment, Manuel has a BlackBerry Playbook tablet here, for example, and what's on his tablet is a list of all the flights that he has to inspect, prioritized and ordered so that he can do his job most effectively. And so what we're going to do here is we are going to pick the flight that Manuel is going to be inspecting. And let's, let's pretend that he has identified that there is some maintenance that's actually required on this flight. 
So he can, on his tablet, as he's you know performing his inspection, he can indicate that this maintenance is required, and he can provide some details about the maintenance that's that's needed. Um, you know, found a faulty fuse, and we can indicate that a part is required, and we can pick, um, you know, maybe it's that darn 100 amp fuse that just keeps uh, that keeps failing. And so what he can do is he can go ahead and submit this particular part request or this um, this issue that he's found with the plane. Now before I do that, what I want to do is I want to also introduce you to one other person and that is Wally Williams. So Wally is a warehouse worker and so what's going to happen as Manuel submits the fact that he's found that this faulty part uh, on this plane needs to be replaced is we're suddenly going to see how that kicks off a business process that requires Wally, the warehouse worker, to be able to um, gather the right parts uh, and participate in the process of making sure that things are ready when the flight comes in, when the plane comes into the hangar to be repaired. Okay, so let me go ahead and come back to Manuel, have him submit that request as a result of uh, performing his inspection. And if we switch back over to Wally, what we're able to see from Wally's environment here is that on Wally's to-do list pops uh, this this task to retrieve the part from the warehouse. So now he's got a job to do, he can look at his task list, he can start to complete this work that's been assigned to him. But maybe in order for him to really understand where this task came from and what's going on, he can interact with his task list here. And now, So what we're seeing is the process portal of IBM Business Process Manager because we're actually kicked off a business process here to do this part retrieval. And what Wally can do is he can view the process diagram which shows in the context of the overall end-to-end -end process where the step is that Wally um, is participating. So here's Wally the warehouse worker and here you can see here's his currently active step to retrieve the part from the warehouse. Now one thing that's interesting here is you'll notice that our process has actually been designed to when the request comes in automatically we are looking up the part location figuring out where it is in the warehouse so we can tell Wally we are also identifying whether the current inventory of that part is now below some threshold, right? And if it's below a particular threshold, perhaps we need to prepare an electronic order and submit a request to actually purchase more of this part so that we're never in an out-of-stock situation. And so in, in combination of Wally being at the step of the process where he's retrieving the part from the warehouse, we can also see that there's an inventory manager that has a to-do on their to-do list to review that part order to make sure that we're replenishing the parts that we're using. So a lot happening behind the scenes here in terms of the orchestration of the business process that was kicked off by Manuel, clicking the button to indicate that he needs a new part. And IBM Business Process manage, Manager is able to make sure that everybody's doing their job at the right time so nothing is falling through the cracks. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and close that. And let's come back to our story with Mike. So if we come back to our control center. So at this point, um, you know, Mike is about to have a good night's sleep, so let's, let's send the event here to indicate that time has passed and Mike is now um, at the point where he's ready to take his, uh, his final leg of the journey on to Las Vegas. And we'll move on to, uh, to our last step of our scenario here, which is the baggage claim. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send an event to indicate that the final leg of his flight has landed and Mike is on his way to the baggage carousel. Okay, so again, you know, when his flight lands, his mobile app updates, and now instead of uh, per making purchases in flight, he can arrange for some ground transportation, perhaps. Um, and at this point, you know, Mike is at the baggage carousel, and maybe he's got that sinking feeling in his stomach as the bags are really not coming down the ramp anymore. People are starting to leave, and you've got the few bags that are continually going around, but Mike doesn't see his bag. Now, we have identified, as on the fly, that we have lost Mike's bag. But what we haven't done is we haven't told Mike that we've lost his bag yet. And the reason is is that we're waiting to see if we're able to find his bag within a particular period of time. Because if we do, that's going to change the message that we send him. So for example, let's go ahead and, and send the event now that indicates that we're going to find his bag. And now based on the amount of time that has elapsed between when we knew it was lost and when we found it, we can identify whether or not we want to, for example, send Mike a notification to say, hey, we'll bring this to your hotel. Or in this case, we can tell him, great news, we found your bag. Um, 
Now, it's not going to be coming on the baggage carousel, but here's the location specifically in the airport where you can come to pick us up, you know, so the customer service desk near carousel number four. And to compensate you for your troubles, here is some uh, a coupon to enjoy the Rock of Ages store at the Venetian because perhaps we know that he's staying at the Venetian for his final destination and we can um, you know, help to just to ease the pain of this unfortunate experience again, you know, having, having lost his bag. So again, Mike's probably not super happy that his bag was lost, but he's happy that he actually gets to leave the airport with it and happier that he gets this uh, free perk um, of enjoying the show in Las Vegas as a result. So let's go ahead and close that notification. And just to finish off our story, we'll send the event to indicate that Mike has left the airport, again, detecting based on geolocation that he has ent you know, left the premises of, uh, of the airport region. And so on his mobile app, we'll see that the notification will now change. Ground transportation is no longer required. And now based on the fact that um, his flight has completed, his itinerary is updated, and he's ready to uh, eventually take his uh, connecting flight home after a fantastic experience at Impact 2013. So that's the end-to-end -end story with Mike. Um, we saw how, as a result of a number of technologies that were at play here, including IBM Operational Decision Manager, IBM Business Process Manager, uh, Worklight for our mobile application, um, MQTT, and IBM Integration Bus, and Web3MQ for sending the messages back and forth to make sure that all of the, uh, the information is getting to Mike and getting from our operational systems to our decision management infrastructure. Lots of things going on. Overall, end-to-end -end experience that helps Mike to be as happy as possible, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll still continue to fly uh, on the fly airlines. Thank you.